Hey everybody, James here, your RV Ninja and MyRVNinja.com. Hey, this is part two for our two-part series of traveling, RVing with pets. How do you know this is video two? Because well, I'm on the other side of the camera. So, may or may not be wearing the same shirt. I still don't know what this is. Um, you have certain parks and campgrounds where they won't let you wash your dog. Uh, and of course, our dog is small enough we could throw throw her in the shower and wash her up real good. But, you know, dry shampoo or conditioner or something to help them smell a little better clean and then uh, use your, your brush to go through and clean up uh, your furry friend. That's been pretty helpful. It's something very simple, but something we learned along the way. In addition to that, another idea that we had is we brought wet wipes with us. Those are great for wiping the paws uh, as your as your furry friend decides to come back into your RV. It's also good for wiping high knees if you need to. Can I say that? One of our trips we forgot to, I think I said twips. <laughs> One of our trips we forgot to bring um, her crate with us and we were already an hour into the trip and we said, you know what, we'll just, we'll make do. Um, so one of the nights when we were traveling, we actually stayed outside of the RV. Uh, we stayed at a hotel and it was a beautiful night, very cool. We were able to keep her in the RV um, and not bring her into the hotel. And um, long story short, we woke up the next day and because, you know, Genius decided to, to put her in uh, a room with the door closed, uh, she decided to try to scratch her way through. Uh, so that was a fun repair. <laughs> As you're traveling, make sure you call ahead and know what is and what is not allowed when it comes to pets. Certain parks, certain campgrounds, certain parks won't even let you bring in dogs, but um, you know, certain campgrounds will say, yes, there's an extra fee, it's uh, dog friendly, but then they may or may not let you have certain breeds, uh, what you know, are deemed more aggressive breeds. Uh, oh, interesting side note, by the way, we had an English Bulldog before, and I learned watching the Westminster Dog Show one Saturday afternoon when there was nothing else on, <laughs> That ad is actually uh, the Bulldogs and the English Bulldog, you know, uh, particularly, is a non-sporting breed. And I knew that to be absolutely true when we had ours. But I don't know what breed our Coco, I mean, I know what breed she is, but I don't know what category she is. But anyway, it'd be like a cat-dog category in my opinion, if I had the chance and the luxury to name it. So anyway, think about that. Make sure that you know that uh, whether or not your your dogs especially or your animals can go into the campgrounds with you because that'll really put a damper on your trip if you find that you get all the way to some place and then they don't allow pets. So something to think about there. Um, I mentioned this earlier on the previous video that you know you want to stop every couple hours if you can and make sure that you do lots of walks. Before we go on a long trip or if we're traveling through the day, I will make sure that I take the dog, uh, our dog Coco, and just walk and walk and walk as long as I as long as I can, as long as I, as much time as I have, just to really tire her out. Um, that's really good for the dog. It also helps the, the stress levels go down as she's traveling. Look, she loves to travel. You can see in the, in the picture here uh, behind me that, uh, you know, this was something I shared on the last video. She loves to sit right up front there. She loves to traveling, but the walking and the exercise is certainly, certainly help. helpful, I think, for not only for you, but also for her. Um, Listen, that's pretty much it. Uh, oh wait, sorry, I had one more. Make sure that you've got an area there where you can put your leash and harness and or harness next to the door so you have easy access. I can't believe I almost forgot this one. This one is huge for us. Make sure it's there. There's a hook or something there that you have on your RV that you can very easily, very quickly get the leash for a few reasons. The first is in case there's an accident about to happen and you need to rush out the door and you don't have your leash and you're trying to find it, you want to make sure that uh, it is there for you. Um, the other thing is, too, is that in case, God forbid, there's an emergency, um, there's a, a bad storm, um, or there's something happening, the, there's a fire somewhere or something that you need to get out of your RV, um, even though if there's a fire in your RV, you could, you know, to heck with a leash. But if there's something happening on the campground or the park and you got to get out in a hurry, you want to make sure that you are able to uh, bring Fluffy with you without losing them in the process or in the panic. So, oh yeah, forgot that one. That's a big one. Make sure there's some place to have a leash or a harness. You know, a lot of harnesses today, when you have your dogs especially, will have little pockets and areas where you can put emergency supplies or stuff like there that's on for the dog. If they have medication, whatnot, you could actually put it in the harness. And it's always good to have that handy too. 
Okay, well, that's it. I appreciate your time. We're going to come back to you again next week with at least two videos, maybe three, on another thing that uh, you're going to have to tune in and find out about. Hopefully, this information is helpful. If there's anything I can do for you, please don't hesitate to reach out to me, and we'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Take care.